Hey guys, this is Caitlin, and today I'm going to show you how I make my reed blanks. So, the first thing you need, obviously, is some cane, which I have mine in this little thing that I'm soaking. And this is already gouged, shaped, and profiled cane. There are many different types of cane that you can use to make reeds. You can get some that aren't gouged or aren't shaped or profiled, but this just makes life a little bit easier. And I haven't learned how to do all of those other things yet. And so I just have gouged shaped profiled cane. And I've I'm going to make a couple of blanks today, but I have soaked these overnight. I would say that's like the best bet when soaking cane is just to do it overnight. And yeah, so that's that. And then you're also going to need some sandpaper. And I've got this. This is wet dry sandpaper. And you want to make sure you get wet dry because your um, cane is wet. So you can get wet dry 400 or 600 grit um, sandpaper. I've got 600 grit right now, but 400 works as well. And then just all of your regular retools, some brass wire. You can get 22 gauge or anything kind of similar to that. And just make sure they're cut up in like little pieces. And this is for, you know, wrapping the wires around the reed. So let's just get started. So your reed's going to be quite wet which is good you just want to like kind of tap it dry a little bit just like a tiny bit but it's still very wet and damp then the first thing you're going to do is take some sandpaper and do what we call beveling so beveling is where hold on a minute let me show you so i don't know if y'all can see that but the there we go the sides of the reeds are like completely straight up like this, but we want them to be like that. So just a little angled in. You can use sandpaper for this or you can um, use an X-Acto knife, which is a little more precise, but it's also, you know, very, it's more difficult to do. And so the sandpaper just really lets you control how much you do. Also, I do all four sides, so this side, this side, and these two sides, but some people just do one side of each end. I've just noticed that there's lots of unevenness with my blanks if I do it like that, so I'm just, I just do it on all four sides. So I'm still beveling and after I get done beveling, don't put your don't put your sandpaper away when you're done because you're still gonna need it. And you only want to do about five millimeters. So the most important thing to have when reed making is to have a ruler. And so just make sure that you're doing about five three to five millimeters of beveling. And there's, I can do like other videos on like how to bevel or how I bevel to be more specific, but this video is just going to be on how to make blanks roughly. So what I also do is I just check to see that everything is okay. If I have to go in with my X-Acto knife a little bit to do just like the tiniest bit, I will. But you just want to be very careful when doing that because, you know, you can mess everything up with an X-Acto knife. So, I'm just like cleaning up the edges. There we go. So, my reed is beveled. I'm just going to make sure there are no rough spots. So once you have a beveled reed, you want to kind of like dip it back in your water again. And this is going to be a continuous thing. Every time you do something, basically, you're going to want to dip your cane back in the water just to make sure it stays very damp. 
And so after this, you are wanting, so you still have your sandpaper and you're gonna take the inside part of the reed or like the concave part and you're just gonna take your sandpaper and go over that part of the cane just to make sure there are no rough spots at all. Make sure everything's smooth and clean before we make our marks to put the wires. Okay, so after this, you can put the sandpaper away. And then you're going to want to get, what is this thing called? I can't remember what it's called, but canvas, something like that forgot what it was called but this is basically what you use to make the indentions of where your wires are going to go so you want to make sure that your knife is already sharpened I sharpened mine already so it's ready to go you're going to want to put it on this little thingy and I already have my marks of where I put my wires I usually I do it um, three meter meter three millimeters from um, the back, and then um, no, I actually I do I put my wire markings a millimeter from the back of the reed, and then from that five millimeters back, and then after that ten millimeters back. So, yeah, let me just make sure these all are correct with how my read is. Okay, so yeah, this is one millimeter from the back of the read, and then this mark right here is five from the back. And this mark is three from like the very back of the reed, the end of the reed. Three from the end. This mark is ten from the back and then one from the back. Okay. And so now you're going to want to take your knife. And you're going to want to line it up with that mark. This is very hard to show on camera, but you're going to want to line it up with that mark. And just be very even and gentle, making a straight line of where your wire is going to go. And you do the same thing for the other ones. It's also important that you make them deep enough to where, you know, your, your knife would get like kind of caught on it. So your wires don't move. Okay, so that's what it looks like. There's all the markings and then you're just gonna wanna turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. One important thing to know when remaking is what you do to one side, you should do to the other. It's like algebra. What you do to one side should be done to the other. Because that just makes your read even and more consistent. Okay. And it's okay to take your time and go slow. I feel like if you start going a little faster, then that's when you mess up more. So that's what it looks like right now. I'm going to do... One more little dip in the water. And then the fun part is we are going to kind of, we're gonna fold the reed and then make sure it goes together. So if your cane is like mine, you have this little indention right here in the middle. I don't know if you can see that, but you have this little indention, and that's where you fold your reed. And so you can just fold it. And make sure that 
the ends are all lined up and you just check everything make sure everything's good Okay, and then you're going to want to get some string. This is the this is the string that I use. It's like embroidery thread. This is what I use to if I wrap a reed, which is completely different. That would be a different video. But this is what I also use to hold the reed together while I put my wires on. So you want to start at the very tip of the reed and just start wrapping your thread around. And as you can see, I kind of like wrapped it over the beginning so it wouldn't fall off but you want to wrap it very loosely at the beginning like very loosely because obviously it's not that's not a big deal we're not putting wires like on the actual tip of the reed so it's fine just make sure i got everything and then you just want to make sure your reed doesn't move and that it's in a good position And if you have to go back and like bevel a little more or a little less, then that's fine. Not a little less because you can't go back and do less. But if you want to go back and bevel a little more, then you can. And so as you are going down the reed, you want to make your turn tighter. So right now my turn is pretty tight. And I'm just making sure everything stays together. And also, this thread is very gorgeous. Like, I mean, the colors are just so pretty. And I've had this since I've started reed making. So, it really does last a good while. And it's also used for reed wrapping. Like if I wanted to wrap my reeds instead of gluing them, it's really good for that. So when you're done, when you when you get to the bottom of the reed and, you know, you see where I had that little indention where my wire is going to go, you just want to cut the string and there you go. Your reed is very secure. I know it doesn't look beautiful, but it's not supposed to because it's going to come off in a little bit anyway. Okay, now you want to take your wire. And so this is just some brass wire. I think this is 22 gauge. I may be mistaken, but you are, it doesn't matter which side you do. The first one, it doesn't matter which side you do. So you're going to take your wire and hold it like at the back of your reed like this. And then you are going you're going to wrap the right part above the left and then the left obviously below the right and you come around to the end and it looks like that and then you're just going to want to keep with that pattern and what I like to do is make like a little I don't know if you can see that it's like a little X where the wires cross and then you're going to take your pliers and put it where those two wires meet. And then you're going to pull and twist. Pull and twist. And then you can just turn it around to make sure and you can adjust your wires. So, whenever you put your wires on, you don't want them to cross over right here. It's got to be very smooth and straight, and they only cross, like, right here. So, after you've tightened it a little bit and adjusted it, you can do a little twist again. Adjust it some more. Make sure it's not super duper loose, otherwise it'll fall off. But 
but don't make it super tight right now. We, we're going to have to go back and adjust it. So now that you've put the third wire on, which I say it's the third because it's the third from the bottom. Um, I, don't know. I say it's the third because that's the order it goes, the first, second, and third wire. So now you're going to unravel just a little bit to where the next indention for the next wire is. Okay, so there it is. And then you're just gonna do the same thing, except you wanna make sure that whichever end your wire is poking out, like this, that's the side that will face you because when you make your reads, the third wire and the first wire are pointed the same direction, but the second wire is pointed the opposite. So you want to make sure that you're holding your read like this where it's pointing towards you. And then just do the same thing we did on the third wire. You just put it behind your read and then wrap the right wire around the left and I know sometimes the thread gets in the way you can just pull it out of the way and then there we go then again there's your little there's your little x right there don't know y'all can see that that little x and then you're going to want to take your pliers put it at the um, point where they cross, grab, pull, and twist. Pull and twist, and then turn it around, adjust it. And so the reason why we made those marks in the cane is so the wires will have a place to go. And when you adjust it, it just fits perfectly into that little spot. Okay. And then when they're adjusted, you just want to maybe pull and twist one more time and then leave it loose because we're going to come back to it later. Okay, and sometimes your, your wires aren't going to all be the perfect size. You can just trim it. Okay, and then after this, you can take all of your thread off the reed, just Pull it off the reed. Set this to a side. If you're if you're gonna make more blanks, you could always just use the same thread. Or if you're just making one, you can just throw it away. Okay. Now we just repeat the same process. Make sure the this point. Make sure that it's pointing at you, towards you. And then you're gonna wanna put the wire behind the reed. And hold it with your finger like that and then the right go the right side over the left make sure that they stay straight and then bring it around bring it around and make the same little X. Okay. And then get your pliers. Put it at the point where they cross, where the wires cross. And you want to try to center it in the middle of the reed as much as you can. If you don't, then it's okay because they're going to get loose a little bit anyways. And so you're going to pull, twist, pull, twist. I usually do like two turns and then I adjust. Just making sure that the wire's in the right place. I always feel like the first wire is hardest because it's like right at the edge. And it's one millimeter and it's very hard to just do one millimeter. Okay, after you've adjusted, then just pull and twist again, and pull and twist again, and there we go. And they don't look perfect right now, but they're going to loosen, and then we're going to adjust them more. 
Okay, it's time for another water dip and then we'll go on to the next step. So the next step is forming the reed. So the reed is like completely flat right now. And now what you need to do is get your forming mandrel. It looks like this. And it's gonna go in the end of the reed. And you don't wanna force it. You just wanna make sure you, the reed's on there a little bit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pliers and you're just gonna squeeze the third wire to make it rounded. And you're gonna do these with all the wires. And so the third wire should be completely circular. And then the second wire should be a circle as well. But then the first wire, this, this wire right here can be more of an oval shape. But as you do as you squeeze the wires to make them more circular then you push you can push the blank further down on the mandrel like so so i'm just going to keep going and tightening not tightening i'm going to keep going and making these wires circular You want to make sure that when, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even in frame. When You want to make sure that whenever you are squeezing the wires that you don't forget about this little bit of cane down here. Because if you don't do that and make that part circular, then it's going to kind of over time flare out. And we don't want that. We want everything to look very uniform and the same. So... I'm just, again, making these wires rounded. And whenever you round them, they loosen up a little more. And so it gives you room to adjust and just make sure everything is clean. Okay, and then it's okay to like check the end of the reed to see how circular it is. See, I could probably do a little bit more, especially like on this side. So it's okay to like double check your work and just make sure you're doing the right thing. Do I'm gonna do like one more little dip in the water. This is by far, I feel like, the most tedious part of it because, I mean, you just got to make sure it's really perfect. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but as close to perfect as you can get it. Okay, so now that that's pretty good, you can see that's very, very much how we want it. Let me do just like a tiny bit more. One more little round around the reed, just to make sure everything's good. And then if you notice your reeds, your reeds, your wires are very, very loose now. And so you just want to go back and tighten, tighten them. First you want to adjust them, make sure they're in the right spot in the middle of the reed. And then you want to just go and pull and twist don't pull too hard otherwise the wire will break we don't want that you want to make sure that you know your third wire does not move at all like it is literally set on that part of the reed your second wire also you want it to be very firm very tight
and you'll know it when it's tight enough because if you see right there the second wire you can see how there's a big gap whenever I pull it and that's why you pull it is so you can see how loose it is and so that was very loose but look now now it's only a little bit loose I'm going to tighten it just a tiny bit okay and then the first wire the first wire can wiggle a little bit you actually want it to wiggle a little bit so this one is actually pretty good it's already wiggling so i'm just not gonna touch it but now just one last little overview make sure everything looks good and then the next thing you're going to want to do is obviously you're going to want to get rid of these little parts of the wire. So what I do is I just like squeeze the two ends together and then use my little pliers to clip it. And I do that for every wire. And then we're almost done. We only have like a couple more steps left. So what you're going to do once you have those ends of the wires clipped, you are going to have to kind of fold the ends of these wires in the place they need to be so you can glue and or wrap them. So what I like to do is I'll start with the first wire. And I can keep it on this mandrel or you can switch to... The holding mandrel it it don't really matter and so since the reed is upside down the wire is right here i just like to get my pliers and just push the wire down so it looks like that and you can obviously you can adjust it because the first wire is pretty loose anyway so you can adjust it just make sure it didn't move any so there you go and then same thing with the second wire, except second wire is going to go up. So this, if you're looking at the reed face on, the first wire goes down, the second wire goes up, and the third wire as well will go up. So this is the second wire. So it would look like that. And just make sure it's not, nothing's wrong with it. Okay, and then if you are wrapping your reed, which that would be a separate video, obviously, if you're wrapping your reed, you would actually not put this third wire up. But for today, I'm only gluing my reeds with hot glue. So I will be folding this wire, the third wire, up. You want to make sure you fold it up. And then... That's what it looks like. That is what a finished reed or a finished blank looks like. The reed is not finished yet, but this is what a finished blank looks like. Now, the best thing to do is to let your blank sit for as long as possible. The thing that you do last is cutting the tip. So, right now, I'm just going to be making blanks, and then at the end, I'm going to use my little hot hot glue gun to glue the reed from the second wire to the third wire which I can show in a, another video but basically that's all you want to do for your blank making you also after you glue it you may want to like ream it out and stuff like that but do not cut the tip until the reed has sit has had time to sit for at least I would say like a day or two days the longer the better obviously we can't just we don't have enough time to make reeds sit for like three months but the longer the reed sits the better and so that's basically all i wanted to show y'all for this video is just how to make a blank and the kind of cane i use definitely just depends this cane and the other two pieces of cane that i am using is the donati cane in the van housen shape so i get my cane from barton cane 
and this is obviously like their Donati cane and the Van Housen shape is just the kind of shape that it is. There's so many different types of cane and types of shapes. So that's something to look into. I'm kind of experimenting with the Donati Van Housen and I really like it so far. So I'll keep y'all updated on that. But other than that, that's the end of the video. This is like a little close up of what the blank looks like. I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to make some more blanks. And this is something I do literally and like watch TV and do it because it's just such a, a routine now. So I just make a lot of them, let them sit, and then as I need them, I'll get them up. So thank y'all for watching. I know this is probably a long video. I'm going to like edit it a little bit. But if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope y'all have a great day. Bye.